Okay, this is uh, the second part of uh, uh, the, this topic. Now I'm going to show you how to display categories of data after we went through the, in the first video about the difference. Uh, now we want to see how we do that. Of course, categorical data, the best way is to, um, to present them in, in, a, in a counting way. So what do you mean counting? It means the only way you can do for, for categorical data is to count how many people in this categories, right? So you cannot really calculate average or standard deviation or anything that we know from uh, the usual statistic. But when it comes to categorical data, the only way is to count how many item or elements or object inside each of these categories. So we're going to show you later on how to do that uh, with the real data so I can show you some stuff on ex on Excel. Yeah, so let me go ahead here and show you. This is a bar chart, uh, but in a vertical way. And you can see on the right hand side here to uh, the same data uh, being represented in different ways. You always might really ask the question, what should I use? Uh, should I use the vertical or the horizontal one? Uh, yeah, that's a, could probably a very important point. Uh, we always recommend to use the horizontal line if, um, if you want to sort them, uh, like this one here with the highest and then the lowest, but you can make it even the other way around. So I would like to have the, always the, the, the highest bar here uh, to be the first group and then the next highest and so on. In, in, a, in, a, in a kind of descending way, not an ascending way like this one. Uh, um, the vertical makes more sense if the groups related to time, for instance, time uh, like a season, season one, season two, season three, or maybe quarter, quarter one, quarter two, and so on, or maybe years, year one, year two, year three. So it will make more sense. You put the bars uh, as vertical, representation if the categories are more uh, related to time and they have certain order but if uh, this is very good for basically uh, ordinal data but for nominal data uh, it's the best way to represent data is horizontal bar like this one uh, by keeping uh, the highest uh, category uh, on the top uh, in again uh, uh, descending way, not in ascending way, as you see here. Uh, another way to represent um, uh, categorical data is pie chart. Pie chart has advantage and disadvantage. The disadvantage of, um, uh, let's talk about the advantage. Advantage is basically you can uh, uh, see all of them related to each other uh, with the relative um, size. Why? Because the pie has to have 100% space or area and each slice here represent part of the pie so it's a very interesting to visualize data using pie when you have a um, few categories not many because if there are many some of the slice will be uh, probably dominant or some of them they will be um, uh, or will vanish so this is the best way so it's a very good for low number or few number of uh, categories um, definitely in the current uh, software uh, industry, uh, most of the software can offer uh, what they call stacked um, bar chart where you can also show the relative size of each one. So pi is good only for uh, to show uh, relative size against each other. Pi is good for only few number of categories. Otherwise, you have to choose one of these a bar, uh, physical, uh, uh, vertical, or horizontal, based on what I just mentioned, the differences. Here it's another uh, interesting example to show that this was relevant to use pi because we have only three, and uh, it would be nice to show it like that. So this is very relevant. We have an interesting case here uh, when we have only one variable, like the above here. It's, uh, yeah, you can show each variable separately as bar, as a pie chart, but when it comes to two variables like this one, this is the country on the um, column side here. And you have 
an answer of a certain question, no, yes, and NA not applicable. Uh, the question was related to whether or not uh, you are using uh, internet or something like that. So those are the number of people uh, in Britain who answer this question by no. Uh, the same uh, country, this is the number of people who answer by yes. And this is the 153 is number of people in Britain who answer by say no, uh, uh, not available or not applicable for me. So you can see in Britain we have uh, uh, 1,018 uh, respondents. In Egypt we have 1,000 split among the three categories here and so on and so forth. In total we have a sample size of 5,039 uh, respondents. Uh, um, yeah, 1,018 from Britain and 1,011 from the United States and uh, 1,249 said no and 2,175 said yes and so on and so forth. Definitely this is an interesting representation of categorical data. They are not numerical so that's why this is what we call it contingency table and uh, maybe uh, some of you know how to build this kind of thing using pivot table. I can show you later on today in one of the videos how to develop this uh, categorical uh, contingency table. Uh, but we can get a lot of interesting values here. Uh, this is, by the way, um, here, let me draw something here. Maybe I can find a drawer uh, to draw something here. Yeah, maybe. Let me see. Okay, yeah. Uh, this is what we call it uh, basically a kind of marginal uh, total, and this is also marginal total. So those are marginal total uh, for uh, the countries, and this is for the answer of the question. Uh, but in, in, in some cases, we are interested to know what is the probability if I choose anyone. If there is, uh, if I, if all of these people are being in in a room, and this room is basically uh, all of them, they are inside. So if you are here and you want to, uh, yeah, you don't see who is coming out from this door when you open it, but someone is coming out. Uh, out. The question is, what is the possibility that this person is from Egypt? If this is the question, then it looks like uh, you're going to really uh, get the 1,000 from Egypt divided by this value, right? This is very simple. Uh, the other question is, what is the possibility that this person has answered with the, uh, irrespective of which country, what is the probability that this person uh, uh, will answer or answer by yes? In this case, uh, answer by yes, then you're going to take this value here. Okay, it looks like uh, I need to get it again here. Okay, so answer by yes, then I'm going to take this value here and again divide it by this value here, right? So this is, so this is uh, kind of uh, interesting questions, but let us make it a little bit harder. When I say I know this person is saying uh, he answered by no. So what is the probability or the possibility that this person is from Germany? Germany, okay. So then if we know the person, if we know that the person answered by no, then we have only to look at this total here. And out of 1,249, how many German people? This is the German people. So the answer will be 460 divided by 1249. So you have to be very careful here uh, how the question will be asked and uh, which base you are basing on. So this is what we call it conditional probability and give you another one. What is the pro probability that the person who is from Egypt, Egypt, that he answered by yes or she, okay? So if it's Egypt, then you have to look only to this. Because it's a Egypt, then you have to look at this total only 1,000. And out of the 1,000 Egyptian, then how many of them they got yes here? So this, uh, this is the 300. So basically, you're going to 
divide 300 by 1,000 here. So this is 300 divided by 1,000. This is the possibility. But the first one here is no, then immediately you're going to divide by 1,249 irrespective what you're going to really ask later. But you are interested in the German, so 46 divided by this number. So I hope this is clear. So let me continue with the next uh, subject here. This is what I told you before. If you have data that you want to put it like pie chart, but you have multiple subcategories, which will be very tough to represent that using pie because you can use pie for each one separately. So sometimes makes sense, sometimes not. But here it's um, uh, some of the software like Excel uh, gives us an interesting way to uh, build what we call stacked vertical bar chart uh, where you can see the man is already uh, classified according to uh, subcategories. So if you have categories and subcategories, then pie chart will not be possible, but the bar chart, especially the vertical or even horizontal can be used, but we call it stacked uh, representation, stacked uh, bar chart. Uh, one of the very confusing methods and when you eval when you, when you use percentage versus absolute value, uh, there is something called Simpson uh, paradox. And uh, all what you can see here that we have two uh, sales representative Peter and Katerina, uh, and we have another two products. Each one, uh, are, uh, each one is trying to sell a printer or USB flash drive. This is the product. So you can see here, Peter has sold 90 printer out of 100 that he approached. So uh, if obviously his efficiency or productivity in this case is 90%, while Katerina, um, 19 out of 20, it looks 19 less than 90. So who is going really uh, to, um, to, to give us uh, yeah, more money? Yeah, he sold 90. So although Katerina is uh, based on percentage is better than Peter, but to be honest, Peter is better because if you sell more product, it's definitely better. But you can see here, this is part of the paradox that you can see Although Katerina from percentage is better than Peter, nevertheless, you have to be very careful uh, when you look at this. Uh, when it comes to USB, uh, the, it goes uh, a little bit even more interesting here. Um, Peter sold 10 out of 20, so his, uh, his, uh, his yeah, performance is 50%, so still less than Katerina, right? Uh, she sold 75 out of uh, uh, of 100, so basically she should be better. This is obvious here uh, from both sides, from absolute and even percentage. But look at overall, if you are only counting product, uh, in total, uh, Peter sold 100 products portfolio out of 120 uh, that he had in his uh, basket or portfolio, while the same number, 120, that uh, uh, Katerina had, she sold 94. So based on percentage, it's obvious Peter is better. So you can see, although Peter, uh, Peter is better here, but you can see in some product, uh, you, Peter could be not the best in, 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 this, uh, in this exercise. So uh, Samsung paradox is very interesting. Uh, the message here is be careful. When you look at your performance from percentage, you still need to look at an absolute value. Otherwise, you might be very unfair when you evaluate uh, anything, maybe people or maybe a process or operation. Uh, one of the uh, very important thing we tell everyone, don't ever use um, uh, 3D like this one. So if you would suggest which one you're going to use for the same data, always stick to the uh, two dimension, unless the third dimension is really data. But in, uh, if, if you think this is nicer uh, to present it in a, in a 3D, I don't think this is anyone will be happy to see it. As well here, this may be, uh, again, a pie chart. I don't know why uh, you need to do it in a, in a way like that, but uh, again, stick to the uh, two dimension. This is also not an uh, interesting uh, uh, 
the presentation of the data of categorical data you can see here it's really really very very uh, not representative uh, yeah why uh, it's, it's basically the best way is to represent in two dimension so guys i'm gonna finish this we finish already uh, this part related to uh, how to represent or present or display categorical data uh, and you can go ahead and uh, watch it again so the next video will be related definitely uh, to the numerical data